So, uh, on the agenda was wrap up of the day, but uh, we really can uh, make use of the time to say how was the day, and I heard from some that they are processing the question, uh, what are we really here for? Do we have vicious ideas uh, where this meeting can lead to? And so I said, yeah, maybe it's a good idea to exchange on that. And we don't have to discuss or design anything now, but just uh, asking uh, questions and um, dialogue on that so that we can process it during the night, during the dinner table and what else. And tomorrow there's an extra spy space to talk about uh, how could it go on if and what ideas do you have for that. But now just what are your reactions, your thoughts, your feelings, your wishes? How did you experience the day? What resonance does the enterprise so far have in, within you? Uh, it was interesting for me because I kept thinking uh, during the day. No. Yes, okay, no. you're right. Yes, yes, I remember. <laughs> I remember. <laughs> it resonates. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, it was interesting uh, for me uh, throughout the day because I kept uh, trying to focus on what we're here for. Of course, you know, I knew about the invitation and, and all this. And one of, uh, in one of the last groups where we were discussing after uh, the, um, the presentation of Gianfranco, with, with several of the comments that were made in the group, I started to think whether we are here to sort of, I, I, I know it may seem a bit presumptuous, but to uh, sort of shape the future of coaching you know, and, and have an, a wider impact on the, 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 the whole system because the idea is to start here but with an international approach, etc. And on all the really uh, social implication of all that, you know, so, so the, the sort of social impact that we may have uh, throughout uh, this uh, meeting. So I started thinking big in a way. You know, so th this was my first reaction and thoughts of today. Um, yeah, I, I had, so, so we were in that group which we were discussing, it. we took the liberty to, to change the topic and, and it was starting talking about the event. And for me, I, I felt a little yeah, I had a big question mark. What, what is it why I'm here or how much do I get out? Because I, I had the impression that the whole day was focused on content. So a presentation for you, then another presentation. And then in the small groups we were discussing the content of the presentation, adding it a little bit. And, and, and I was coming here, but maybe I had the wrong uh, association with here, is really discussing about the, the profession, the field, maybe also tackle some, some ideas which other people have, which would come out more out of the wisdom of the whole group. Yeah? For, for example, I, I have a big question about the big topic of growth. Yeah? We, we now talk about business and business strategies, and can we continue with the growth which is behind that idea? Yeah? So that, that maybe other people also would have been, or other in our group was saying, maybe we have an idea we would like to share with others and I had the feeling that I, I loved the beginning when we were in groups of four, but there I felt we are pushed to get out because at the moment when it was interesting, we had to change again, yes? So, and the, the other thing, having the content, and that was when we discussed, hey, what was your in idea about this event, yes? So, so when do we start really in depth, think about is that kind of gathering of value or not, or how can we create a shared value? And, and I was happy that you were saying, hey, we bring it up. And now I learn that we have a time slot tomorrow. But I, maybe I like it now that, that we can also in the evening continue with that one. Uh, 
So um, I'm, I'm think, I think I'm also one of those who has the processing question in the head. What, what is this? What will this come up with? Um, I think today the, the content that was today was for me a bit unexpected, or let's say expected a bit more focused on that for me overall topic of an international network. So I expected more content on international views on coaching, organizational development, and that um, these aspects. Um, because what if I, maybe I'm wrong with what I expected, but my overall expectation of that one and a half days would be to have some kind of common idea of what a common understanding of coaching could be on an international level and what kind of mindset might be a basis for an, an, an international network. And just with exchanging with all these internationally experienced coaches, because I, I think everyone has international experience with coaching, um, then I realized that it is a huge challenge to find some kind of common understanding of coaching uh, for an international network where people can agree on and commit on and work together on. So um, that's for me something I, I would really love to have, knowing that this is a huge challenge uh, for one and a half days. But so far from that first day, I have to admit that I do not yet see that it will go into that direction. But maybe tomorrow will change that part. I can tell you a bit about our thoughts on that. Uh, <clears throat> uh, it is true the focus was not for me international coaching. It was uh, edges of organizational coaching and an, how can we start an international discussion on that. So that's it, or from the content, a, a different focus for me. And uh, so we had the idea because we have uh, experience. If you just start and to discuss, you discuss how could we organize ourselves and what are the interests. My experience uh, over decades, this doesn't lead anywhere. This is too complicated. So we had the idea, and we used the format we had in DB uh, VC uh, that we use content presentations on ideas on meeting organizational coaching, uh, meeting business coaching, concepts, ideas, and start with that. And so that there is a content, and then there are, that there are presenters. My experience is if you don't offer presenters, nobody will come to a meeting. So you have to, to, uh, you have to present a program and most of the time, after some time, people say, oh, we would much more like more dialogue. But if you organize more dialogue, people do not come back. So that's, that's a paradox in the field. So this is my idea up to now. If we continue somehow, uh, the idea was more, uh, maybe next time we have different kind of presentations or differently organized. But it should be some uh, presentations of how do people do their international projects. So that they are, um, Michael already offered it for this time. We didn't have uh, space in the schedule at that time. Um, yeah, the question whether we, who, for what purpose really get something out of that, I don't know. I don't have an answer to that. Uh, our starting point was, I don't know any stage where this is discussed internationally. And we want to just start to set a stage up for that. And we are in a learning process. And so we are not fixed. I'm very open, whatever it should be. We don't, I don't have any commercial interest or something like that. I really... I really want to have a qualified discussion that our profession can contribute to the uh, process uh, way into the future of our society. What I personally am not aiming for to organize a learning community on uh, collective supervision and, and, and all that, uh, we have stages for that. I'm not interested to have such a stage here. I'm interested to have a stage for discussing 
uh, at the edge of conceptualization and of practice to the, uh, how uh, coaching can really meet organizational development and how what are the new developments in coaching and what are the new developments in organizational development. This is my aim, but yours can be different. Yes, my uh, motivation to come here, I said, when I look at the uh, big international bodies of coaching like ICF and EMCC, they don't have uh, organizational contextualization or OD or something on their agenda and, and neither in their competences, uh, kernel competences lists. And it's hard to speak with them about, about this. And therefore, I, I think it's one way could be make some form or network with the theme extra this this uh, bodies and when with the help of the German coaching uh, association it could be good but uh, I, I, I have the same experience as you it's rather hard in international context to find uh, partners to speak about it Yeah, use the, the flip chart. I, I think I, I, we work a lot in international context with colleagues from other countries. And I think for, for, for me the difficulty, when, when we meet at a client, you see, when, when, when we meet at a client, we meet as coaches or OD consultants, and I insist that we have people from both sides which is not easy to find uh, in some countries. And what, what happens when we are with the client is that all the other things are coming in. For instance, my favorite example is with the French people. They have another idea of the role of a coach, even if, if they are co coaches. When I work with people from Sri Lanka, and I had a long time Sri Lanka experience, they had a complete other idea how the organization should move and to what, and how they could learn and how they would learn. And for me, uh, this is a very difficult process. And I, uh, sometimes we have, um, uh, we have clients asking us, we make a joint venture now with Israelians, uh, please come and bring some Israeli consultants with, with you. And I tell them I have no experience in a complicated and differentiated situation with Israeli colleagues, so I can't offer you this. It's very important to, to be serious on my point of view in this situation. And I think what is, um, what is uh, one of the aims of my professional life is to develop possibilities so that we share experiences with the client, you see? And it's also when, we tell, when they say, you are very expensive. I say, but we are not a network of consultants from everywhere, and OD consultants and coaches. This is not our model. Our model is to make experiences in projects with the client, and to prepare it seriously, and to explore it seriously, which takes a lot of time, and it brings you to emotion. You see, also sometimes you are angry, the others are angry. It's not only a problem of concept. It is also on the meta side, what, how do you speak about your experience? Then starts a new way of discussing experience because the way how to discuss your experience is not the same everywhere. So I think this, I would like to share things like this with you in, in, if the next meeting takes place. And what is your experience in this field? Because uh, sometimes I, I say I gave up and I, uh, I don't work again in, with joint ventures. It's too complicated. It costs me too much nerves. Uh, it's enough nerves with my colleagues from other countries. Uh, this is a heavy process. And I, uh, with also with beautiful parts, when, the, when you work in a successful way and you share things, it can be extremely beautiful. And you take a bottle of champagne or two or three bottles of champagne at the end when it was successful. But the, the relationship between the 
consultancy system and the client in itself is extremely complicated. And I find it also when you work in a serious way and in, an, in a way you want to share and do something for the client, it's very, uh, it's a lot of work to share things with your colleagues from other countries. When they are good colleagues, when they are superficial colleagues, you can share everything. Okay? But in OD and in coaching, I don't want to work with uh, superficial people or people saying, I speak 300 languages and uh, blah, 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 and I'm an intercultural trainer. And some, th somebody told me I'm an intercultural trainer. I say, okay, thank you. I go back home. <laughs> no, because in most of companies, the intercultural thing is the thing you put everything on it. You see, when a, a boss of a company asks me and say, my team has an intercultural problem, my hypothesis, he has problems to steer this team. See, and not his problem. And we, we experienced a lot of things where, a lot of situations where people asked us to work with the team and uh, we don't accept to work with the team, for instance, when we have no chance to speak with the boss at least half a day or a day before. And this is not canon learning for nothing. This is paid. Okay, it's not a, uh, there was a beautiful anecdote last time when, because on this, uh, the first meeting is not paid and so on. It was an anecdote, say somebody, go in a restaurant, take the most expensive soup and, take, and say, if I like it, I order something. <laughs> See? And I think this systematic of working together with colleagues in different situations, colleagues having different, coming from different not only schools, but also cultural thing. My, when you work with French people, for instance, when the boss enters the room, they focus on the boss. And me, as a German 68 people, I start on the, you see, and it's not professional because they forget the whole participants. They only look on the boss and they hear what he, what he says, what he could think, and they organize their whole interventions in, con in focusing the boss. And when you have people like this in, in an international OD consulting uh, group, it's hard to work. And Michael, you be connected with the question, what, uh, do you expect something here for, for, for your... For no, your... I think today it was for me uh, too, too much conceptual. Mm -hmm. It was, for me it was too much conceptual. I would rather have liked to have more experience with people working in international um, in international situations and that they present their situation. I can present this with even photos because I have asked my clients if I can use the slides and so on in concrete situations of consultancy in Asia and Europe and so on. And I, I would like to share it with people and it is connected to what you said. Uh, I would like to know more what you do, but not only to speak in a group about what you do, also to make it... Uh, you, so that you can seize it, you can grasp it. Okay. Um, why I'm here? <clears throat> I was very curious about your initiative, and uh, and for me was uh, I think it was very nice surprise, and I. Actually, I have a question for you. How do you manage to bring together so many people? And I think uh, all of us have different background, different way to interpret our role, different culture. And I think this is a really a good result because I can understand now what you mean uh, create a network. Uh, I think that we are here to adhere to pursue the, your idea to create this international network. And I'm seeing, speaking with the people, uh, it was very interesting in going to different groups uh, to see how different people we are. And this can be only a um, way for us to go back home much more rich than when we arrive here. So thank you. Um, my expectations, I think I came here to find a reflective space 
to exchange with uh, people of my profession. And again, I'm really amazed about the diversity of people, and there are not so many known uh, faces. Normally, if I come regularly to ESB events, and there, it's a little bit of you know meeting friends and family, uh, building on what you said, you know, the diversity of people uh, who came here. Um, I think that's a richness in itself, and thanks for the hosting organization. When it comes to content, I think what I'm curious about, and this is still in process, is to see or to explore how ISB concepts travel globally. I've known ISB for many years now, but there are, it's a kind of institution in Germany. But there is not, there are no inter, international, you know, how do you say, you know, Außenstellen, you know. It, it is really, Wiesloch. Uh, but there is very, there is a lot of conceptual material which would, I would love to see more visibly in global corporations. I've been working for HP, I worked for SAP, but if they speak of coaching, I think uh, coaching is buying stuff from uh, um, <coughs> Center of Creative um, uh, Leadership from the big consultancy firms. And my question is, you know, is this what ISP has to offer too, too complex? I think uh, ISP doesn't go there and say, we sell coaching, great skills, executive coaching, is this, this, and this, and you get that in return. Saying, you know, coaching is not a skill, it's a perspective. And already that, maybe this is too much for <laughs> a global audience. But I'm really curious, I think uh, this is, um, something I think this culture has to offer, but how do we need to package it or to translate it that it can travel out of Germany? But it arrived already Milano and Piemonte, so, but f further. <laughs> Well, I'm not coming from an ESB background, oh, and it's uh, the first time I'm here in this environment, and I liked it very much today. But I just wanted to tell you what my uh, expectation was coming here, or what I would um, appreciate to, to see. Um, I'm also not coming from coaching policies or something like that. I, I'm a coach. I'm coach with. Uh, I like coaching, but I think coaching is not all. This is so my my background. And if I take this as individual business coaching, I think what is needed is more collective parts to have to. And this is how I understood this with this organizational coaching. And for me, the question would be, how can I bridge the gap between the two things somehow? And is there a community interested in bridging that gap? Because I also think uh, what you said, the perspective um, the, the perspective or the attitude or the posture behind coaching, uh, business coaching, could also be uh, applied to other contexts. But in another context, much more and different things are needed. So it would be, I think, a question of mindset. And it would also be a question of qualification, of course, and theory. And uh, community of practice, I think. And... Uh, um, I would be interested in, is, is there a community interested in expanding um, the individual or the face-to-face -face coaching uh, on, on a one-to-one -one basis to a more collective uh, approaches um, with this uh, attitude behind it, which, which is very useful in, in business coaching. This is something which what interested me and how I understood your, your approach uh, and uh, to find out about this. Uh, how much interest there is, this would be very rewarding from my side. So here you found the first interest in this. Uh, I'm very much interested in this topic also, but I would like to add uh, culture on this list. And um, maybe you can. <laughs> Thank you very much. Um, because... Uh, <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> 
Because when you said uh, you cannot hear this uh, thing about uh, transcultural trainings or something like that, um, for me it makes a great difference uh, whether I go to, uh, to give a group counseling or a group coaching uh, in Kuwait or in uh, Rio. So when people are working together, you can say, okay, if there, someone is talking about a culture topic, it's a leadership topic, or he cannot steer his team. But I think you have also to admit that there are cultural differences between people, and that in some cases, or th that there is a special knowledge uh, you can acquire, and then you can deal quite a lot better with these cultural differences as if you haven't this knowledge. So um, I think working with groups is a great thing. And uh, if you work with groups and if you change groups, you are closer to the organizational change than if you work only with single people. So that's my idea. I just wanted to share something on intercultural differences because uh, for me um, many of the expectations that were just expressed that uh, um, this is a target for those two days and that some people were still missing that we don't see already the target at the end of the horizon. I think that is something very German that we are target oriented and at the same time <laughs> Uh, I think it was, uh, I like very much the idea of the stage that we first have to uh, let the stage uh, create or we have to create this stage also by discussing about uh, content because otherwise there's not yet a network, there's not a dynamic that I can feel as a ground then for afterwards developing further ideas for a network where we all have a commitment behind in the ideal case. No, no, I, I, I totally agree with you, but uh, I think what, what we use, uh, we call it reading grids, which means in the situation, we come also with cultural schemes. Uh, for instance, when we worked in this Korea, French, German helicopter program, we asked first the Germans, the French, and the Koreans how they see their role in this project. We had the chance that we could... Uh, uh, work to the beginning of the project and not when it's already failed. So um, we asked them what is the role and then we made a kind of um, role negotiation between our Korean consultant who played the role of the Korean project leader. And the French and the German tried to negotiate about their role and it was clearly uh, cultural because the German tried to negotiate a role as Germans negotiate a role. You see, but in Korea you negotiate a role in a very different manner, if you can negotiate your role, which is not already clear in Korea. So we also speak about Kore um, cultural things, but for us it was a part of the role discussion. It was a part of the role discussion, and we explained to Europeans how it works in Korea at a certain moment but we paid attention that they don't focus only on cultural things. You see, because uh, I know too many uh, intercultural trainers, they have only one hammer and they see every time uh, something is a cultural thing, you see. And uh, so we, we, I think it's very important to, to work on cultural things, but um, only uh, also with an OD and coach perspective and not as, a, as an explanation training, how is Korea? See, because this is useless, and uh, this, uh, like Volkshochschule, do it for tourists before they go to Korea. This is useless for, for business. So I, I think, and this is also one of the difficulties of those people here, you see, because you have, for instance, we had with one Korean colleague, we gave up with him because at any occasion, the French and the German had any question, he started again to explain how is Korea, you see. Because he has only he didn't know what is an OD consultant role, you see, and so you have to explain him at the end of the day. Sorry, but 
we don't go on working together. Thank you. So uh, we have come to an, to an end. Just something I, I heard out of your discussion um, that triggered me. So one question was how ESP B concepts could travel around globally or how they could be packed or maybe the basic of the discussion could be these concepts. And this is more the international question, how could we transform that stuff? And the second question has been more about like how can there be a shift more from the one-to-one uh, -one coaching and the, to coaching of bigger groups or organizational coachings. Could you imagine, uh, uh, imagine, or is there an idea to have something like a fishbowl about that topics tomorrow, like t to get on an open or more open format to get these questions, or, or just maybe collect the questions that are open, and maybe some people can add to it, so we can get out of this meeting having a list of questions, also like maybe how INOC should be shaped, so it would be a long list, and we can find out what is what is bothering us. So I do not like uh, the, if, if there comes up the idea, this, this is uh, only to spread ISP concepts. This is certainly, if it comes out that people uh, find our concepts useful, I would be delighted. But that's not the aim. Uh, the aim is really uh, the focus and from different perspectives, this is why we invited uh, different presenters from different schools uh, to focus uh, how can the coaching approach and the OD approach meet each other. And this is really my focus. It's not, my first focus is not international encounter or intercultural work. This was not my, my idea. I want to be the focus an international discussion but the focus from my side should be meeting uh, the coaching approach and the organizational development approach. Because I don't know any stage in the world where this is discussed in a qualified way. This was my aim. Take with this as a, a, a finished word. Please stay silent because I have to make announcements.